was the summer and it was hot. And by one of the houses, there was a little boy who obviously came for the summer to spend the summer holidays. And he looked at us. He didn't, I didn't know him. I've never seen him. And he came to me and I said hello and he came to me and he said, are you the people giving us the water? And I said yes and he said, simply, thank you. The Anti-Atlas Mountains in southwest Morocco are a region of great natural beauty. However, the area with its scattered villages suffers from drought and poor soil quality. This destabilizes the traditional Berber communities and places particular burdens on women. Women's lives here are extremely hard. They have to go out every day and travel long distances in search of water, leaving the children at home unprotected. And you have to bring water and fodder for the cattle, and divide it up and then feed the cows and clean out the barn. When am I supposed to find the time to take care of my kids that I locked inside the room? When? Yes, it was women who suffered the most here. They had to fetch water. And for the men, who all had jobs, making a living was also hard. But here, where the mountains, the Atlantic and the Sahara are close together, there is a high incidence of fog and mist, which can be used to obtain clean drinking water. Porque hay algunos indicadores muy buenos para saber si ese lugar es adecuado para. There are some very good indicators for the best site for a project to collect water from fog. For example, where moss gathers on rocks, or where you find lichen on plants. The cloud fissure opens up new perspectives for the Berbers. I couldn't believe it the first time I heard about the idea of fog harvesting. I was like, how the hell could they do that? I started questioning the idea and imagining the processes. Ita Troutvine and the members of the Darcy Hamad team, including Mohammed and Hussein, installed a total of 31 cloud fisher on Mount Boutmetskida. This is now the world's largest fog collector site, which provides 1,600 people with clean drinking water and has transformed their lives. Fog is driven by the wind through the close mesh of the cloudfisher nets. Tiny droplets of moisture are caught in the specially developed 3D mesh and then merge into larger drops, which fall into the catching trough. From there, the water flows into a system of pipes leading to the cisterns in the valley, 26 kilometers away. The precious resource is then distributed to the individual households. Each house is connected to the water supply. The Berber families now have a ready supply of drinking water, which they can also use to cultivate their vegetable gardens. We are happy to have the fog water in our households. Life is so wonderful for us. Most importantly, we save time, where we used to waste four to five hours every day. We have water pipes in the kitchen, in the toilet and hall, and we even have a washing machine. We don't have to struggle with water anymore, thanks be to God. Mohammed and his family now have a small garden to provide them with fruit and vegetables for a healthier diet. I can say what a huge difference the fog water has made to my family and to the lives of everyone involved with it. We can use the time we spent looking for water to do other things. Most importantly, I now have time to think about myself and my future. The men proudly show us their harvest, on which they can now rely throughout the year, thanks to the regular water supply from the cloud fisher.
Der Cloudfischer ist ein Beitrag. The Cloudfisher is a contribution to combating the climate change related causes of forced migration. It gives people more security in their valley, their surroundings, their families, so that they can continue living there instead of moving to the urban areas, which are rapidly turning into megacities. I think that the coastal areas, where we can obtain drinking water from fog, can have a real future. There, people can rely on having drinking water every day, since they can store the water in cisterns outside the rainy season. So they can build a future for themselves, which was impossible before the cloudfisher arrived. Our partner foundation, Darcy Hamad, has worked with the manufacturer to develop a prepaid charge card system. If a user consumes more than one cubic meter of water, the price rises beyond the standard 40 euro cents. The aim of this is to prevent wastage, and anyone needing more water, for example to grow fruit or vegetables that they intend to sell, has to pay more into the scheme. <laughs> what is vital to me in any Cloudfisher project is that I train people to become experts and that at the end of the project I am superfluous. In this learning process, especially through Peter, I picked up a great deal of knowledge about fog catching technology. Now I have the confidence to assemble the fog nets by myself. The Cloud Fisher project on Mount Butmetskida has a range of positive impacts. As well as providing a reliable supply of drinking water in one of the world's driest regions, the project promotes educational initiatives and helps to protect local culture and create jobs. Young men such as Mohammed and Hussein can now look to the future with optimism, since they know about the importance of fog which for them has opened up a new space of time and prosperity.